Good morning. Good morning to you. The peace of the Lord be with you. I know I'm out of sequence with this, but that's the way I am. <laughs> Good to be with you, and we welcome you in our worship this day. Pastor Mark is on vacation, and uh, we pray that he's having a relaxing week and a good week from that standpoint. We welcome those on live stream, and I pray that uh, this service is a service that builds your faith, my faith, and those who are listening as well. Uh, several announcements. We want to thank those people that were so generous in helping out at the Franklin Avenue Mission this past Tuesday and Thursday, uh, both in the kitchen and down at the uh, unit there. Also those that put together the Fall Arts and Crafts Festival yesterday, the pickup and the cleanup and all that went with that too. Thank you so much. Uh, coming up this week at Lamb of God, Monday evening is Euchre Night. Uh, Tuesday, the quilters and trustees will be meeting. Wednesday, the Out to Lunch Bunch at Mario's. Thursday, Church Auction Committee meeting, 10.30 a.m. That's coming up. I have some more to say on that. Uh, Saturday, the Bingo Buddies are meeting together and having some good time. Bible study, we continue with our Monday morning, our Monday afternoon women's Bible study and certainly encourage you if you have the time and opportunity and we'll be speaking a little bit about that in our uh, message for this day and the readings that we have too about being in God's word. In fact, the, the theme for today is rally in the word of God. Now, Normally we would say rally around the Word of God, right? But if we're around the Word of God, we're not in it. And for us as Christians, for us to be strengthened in our faith, we have to rally in the Word of God, be in the Word of God. And so I'm sure you'll hear that, and I pray that that message will come through by the Holy Spirit. Uh, also, the... Uh, on Wednesday, 10 a.m., Life Light Study on Ezekiel Returns. And at 7 p.m., a, a new study on the Gospel of Mark, using a video that uh, has word-for-word -word narration from the scripture and dramatized with actors on the screen. So uh, put that down as an opportunity of being in the word. Sunday, uh, Starting next Sunday again will be the longer look at the lessons as pastor will lead that class at 9 a.m. in the morning. And so another way of being in the word, rallying in God's word. Church auction coming up. You've seen articles on it and all. October 13th. Need new items. It can be a service you're willing to perform, something that you would be willing to do, whether it would be helping out in a home or baking a cake or whatever it might be. Uh, this is not a white elephant sale. It's not a rummage sale. So it's not something used, but it's something that uh, we can and be encouraged with. Next Sunday, Pastor has on schedule the Back to Sunday School Roundup. Uh, and then check your news and notes for more information that comes from that. The Holy Spirit talked to me this last week, as he usually does, and put in my heart something that I wanted to share. As you know that uh, I generally and do not do children's messages. Our pastor prays for us, doesn't he? Every Sunday, stands there and he prays for all of the prayers that are coming in. But our pastor, not only Pastor Mark, but all pastors needs our prayers. And so in place of the children's message, I put, get, I put together, by guidance of the Holy Spirit, a prayer for Pastor Mark and for all pastors. 
He doesn't know anything about it. It's not done because of any particular thing that's happening in his life. It's the fact that we need to pray for our pastors and recognize what they're going through. And so please bear with me and join me in that prayer when it comes to that, if you will, please. All right, now we can begin our service. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. You can wave to each other and welcome each other in the house of the Lord as we do. And with that, one final thing. Let us begin with prayer. Lord God, you have drawn us together this day, and we ask that you would bless us. Open up our hearts, our minds, our very ears, not just to hear your word, but to live your word. Give us guidance and direction as we go about our tasks this coming week. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. We sing our opening hymn. Please stand if you're able. We worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us take a moment of silence and reflect on God's word and have a self-examination of our lives, particularly this past week, the sins of omission as well as the sins of commission. Let us now confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. For his sake forgives you all of your sins. And as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We responsibly read Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. The snares of death encompassed me. I suffered distress and anguish, then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. Return, O my soul, to your rest. For you have delivered my soul from death, my, eyes from tears. my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, our support and defense in every need, continue to preserve your church in safety. Govern her by your goodness and bless her with your peace. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50. The prophet is, is speaking here, but Isaiah is actually quoting and using Jesus as the source of all of this. He's mouthing, in other words, the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord God gave me a tongue like the learned and an instructed tongue, so I know how to sustain the weary in a word. He wakes me up morning by morning. He wakes up my ear so that I listen like the learned. The learned God opened my ear and myself was not rebellious. I did not turn back. I submitted my back to those who beat me and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from disgrace and from spit. The Lord God will help me, so I will not be disgraced. Therefore I have made my face hard like flint. I know that I will not be put to shame. The one who will quit me is near. 
Who can accuse me? Let us take our stand. Who can pass judgment on me? Let him approach me. Look, the Lord God will help me. Who then can declare me guilty? Look, all of them will wear out like a garment, a mouth, a moth will consume them. Who among you worships the Lord and listens to the voice of his servant? Anyone who walks in darkness and who has no bright light, let him trust in the name of the Lord and let him lean on his God. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading comes to us from James chapter 3. It also talks to us about words, this time words that come out of our mouth. James reminds us that uh, it doesn't always look very good. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways, and if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he's a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. We put bits into the mouth of horses so that they obey us. We guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restful evil, full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth comes blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you're able. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. This is the basis for our sermon message talks about the importance and necessity of hearing words from Jesus. There's one phrase in there that is so very applicable in our life, and I will bring that out to you. When they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd among them and scribes arguing with them. And immediately all the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed and ran up to Jesus and greeted him. And he asked them, what are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered him, teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. And Jesus answered them, O faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. When the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy. and He fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. 
Jesus asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And it has often cast him into fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said, and these are the words we need to listen to. He said, I believe. Help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, you mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, he came out, and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had entered his, the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Next month is October, and it's also within the church called Pastor Appreciation. we do this now. Would you join me in prayer? We pray for our pastor. God's glory is the goal and the purpose of everything. It is written for from him and through him and to him are all things to him be glory forever. O oh Lord, Make us aware that pastors face the regular temptation to fear people instead of God. They wrestle with their own sinful tendencies to please others at the expense of biblical principles. And so we pray our pastor would love God and us so much that he would follow the Lord and seek his glory before any of us. pray that our pastor would believe fully in the inspiration and supreme authority of the Bible. We pray that he would rely <clears throat> on the Holy Spirit working through the word, through the work of ministry. May he trust that it is the gospel itself that is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Lord, we know our modern world constantly pressures our pastor to rely, <coughs> excuse me, to rely on alternative power sources, technology, marketing, ambience, management techniques, music, youthfulness, social media, celebrity, entertainment. May our pastor always rely on the Good Shepherd and the Holy Spirit to lead him. We pray that our pastor would look to scripture first as he thinks through how to do ministry and shape church life rather than following fads and trends. That our pastor would devote himself to the serious study of the Bible and then preach from the Bible. This requires courage because people can have itching ears they won't put up with sound doctrine. Cultural pressures seduce pastors to soften the Bible's message in order to make it more palatable and less offensive, often in the name of evangelism and outreach. But those inside and outside the church need pastors who can say with Paul, I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Lord, do not let our pastor shrink from the whole counsel of God. And Lord, we 
need to be aware that church work can strain our pastor's family. Evening meetings often pull him away from the dinner table. Even when he is home, our, our pastor may be exhausted and disengaged with his family because he's recovering from an explosive board meeting or, or grieving a tragedy in the life of a church member. His wife often bears the weight of unrealistic and unbiblical expectation of what a pastor's wife should be and do. The same is true for his children. And so we pray our pastor would have the strength and discipline to guard time with his wife and children and the grace to be mentally and emotionally present with them. We pray that the elders and the leaders of our church would support our pastor in maintaining at least one day off per week and in using his allotted vacation every year. Managing one's household well is a requirement for those who would lead God's household. Our pastor needs your help to do this, O oh Lord. We pray that the Holy Spirit would cause our pastor to hate sin and love righteousness. We pray for him to be quick to repent when he does sin, and I know he will. We pray for him to be conformed more and more to the image of Christ. We ask, O oh Lord, to deliver him from the evil one. Far too many pastors are falling away. When pastors fall, they bring shame on the gospel and great harm upon your churches, Lord. This is why Paul told Timothy, keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this, for by doing so, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Pastoral our work is people work, which is why pastoring is rewarding, and it's also why pastoral ministry is hard. People disappoint. People sin, people attack. People typically grow very slowly. And so we pray that our shepherd would love the sheep under his care. We ask you, Lord, to guard his heart against bitterness and cynicism resentment and instead cause our pastor to treasure church members and have a tenacious, patient care for church members. Lord, give him faith in your promises to bring the elect to maturity so that he would not grow weary in making disciples. The Apostle James assures us that if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all with reproach. That's good news because pastoral ministry demands the wisdom of Solomon. God's word is true and absolute. And our pastor needs wisdom and divine wisdom from on high for navigating the church politics, shepherding messy counseling situations, balancing a host of competing priorities, and making daily decisions. And so we pray that our pastor would continuously look to God's word for wisdom. O oh Lord, surround our pastor with a team of wise and godly elders and church leaders. Lord, give him a humble heart that is willing to ask for help and, and learn from his inevitable mistakes. John the Baptist confessed to the authorities, he said, I am not the Christ. Now John wasn't the Messiah, and neither is our pastor. Our pastor is just like us. A fellow lost and found sheep. A sinner saved by grace, a stranger in exile in this world. A pile of dust animated and sustained by God's power. And what this all means is our pastor has limits. His body and mind need sleep. His emotions have a breaking point. He has limited intellect and energy and gifting. And so we ask God to spare him from workaholism and lead him to take time off, work reasonable hours, get enough sleep, exercise, be able to know when to be done with things even when they're not done. 
O oh Lord, graciously provide him with real friendships and safe places to unload his burdens. Lord, provide your church with a team of believers who can help carry the load and complement our pastor's strength and weaknesses. And finally, we ask you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, that in all these things our pastor would not lose his joy in the Lord and the work of the ministry. May his heart delight in the Lord, the church, and the gospel work. May you, O oh Lord, make him a happy pastor, because true happiness comes from knowing and walking with Jesus. We pray that the joy of you, his Savior, would, bring, would be his strength in all of his days. We pray all of this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We sing our hymn for the service.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and from the Holy Spirit who would instruct us from these words recorded in Mark, particularly the words that say, I believe, help my unbelief. Please be seated. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, may the words of my mouth and the meditations in our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. It's a pretty horrifying experience to even consider, much less to endure. Your child is sick. Worse than that, your child is actually possessed by a demon, an evil spirit. It's a reality, it's not just something thought about. It controls its behavior, it tries to kill him. Now, the parent who approached Jesus in today's gospel lesson was living every person's worst nightmare, don't you think? Something terribly wrong with my child and I'm powerless to do anything about it. What does one do? Well, the father of the possessed boy speaks up and reaches out to Jesus. He wants to hear words from Jesus. He's heard the miracle stories. He fumbles for words as he formulates his request. If you can do anything, he says, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus' first response is, of course, the response of a question. If you can, what do you mean by that? If you can, I mean, he says all things are possible for one who believes. And in that moment, in that very moment, the boy's father, desperately battling his own doubts, his fears, his troubles, says about the most honest thing a human being can ever say. He says, I believe. Help my unbelief. And so I kind of asked you quietly and within yourselves, I know you've said many times, I believe. Have you ever said, help my unbelief, though? That takes a pretty big heart. It takes a pretty big understanding to do that. You see, there was something Jesus responded to in that wrestling and awkward and transparent mo moment, and he honors it. He does what his disciples could not. He extracts the demon from the boy. He gives the boy and his family a whole new life to live just by a few words. Through Jesus, God is putting his broken creation together, one person, one family at a time. I believe. Help my unbelief. Pretty simple and accurate way to describe the war that goes on in our hearts and minds, isn't it? I mean, if we're really honest about it, I mean, it's a classic Christian paradox. We believe, and then we don't. We trust in God. Say, it's in your hands, Lord. And then we say, I got it back. I do it. We don't trust in God. We build on the rock of salvation, and yet we find ourselves in slippery sand. That's us, and it's not necessarily bad news. Un unbelief is bad, certainly, but, but a spiritual struggle, and that's what we're talking about, an inner tension is proof, I want you to hear this, is proof that faith is still present. Faith that is grasping for breath is still faith. The thing we ought to fear really is when there is no struggle, for that's the time when the fool's world of disbelief and the sinful nurture of nature of Serving ourselves is the highest good. 
We take God out of the picture. In other words, to have faith in Jesus is to experience spiritual turbulence in our lives. Because faith that trusts in God goes to war against the sinful self. The sinful self doesn't appreciate being fought against. It hates being exercised. I want to do it my way, Lord. Just do it my way and everything will be all right. But only Jesus. Only Jesus can cast out that sinful nature and fill us with something far better. And as I said, spiritual turbulence is better than no spiritual turbulence. For please understand, my faithful brothers and sisters, that spiritual turbulence means that faith which the Holy Spirit gave you and me through the gospel of Jesus and our baptism. Spirit, our faith is alive and is beating down our sinful impulses. A complete lack of spiritual turbulence is deadly spiritual death. It means I'm foolishly confident in myself and I just don't care about the things of God at all. And both these ways lead to destruction and finally total separation from God. So what I'm trying to say in all is that whether we live with spiritual turbulence or die eternally, I should say what I'm saying is that we either live with spiritual turbulence or we die eternally. Well, that doesn't sound real good, does it? And I agree with you, it's kind of a bleak outlook on life. But it's a reality. But let me suggest, as we seek God's guidance in the Holy Spirit's work, that there's an upside to experiencing spiritual turbulence in our lives. The times when you are struggling with your faith and is nurtured, fed, and strengthened by the word of God. You see, when we admit to ourselves, I believe, help my unbelief, when we are willing to admit that, we're confessing sin. When we confess sin, you know what God promises. You heard the words in our confession and absolution. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Thank you, Jesus. You see, Jesus is quick to apply his words his mercy to our doubts. He's quick to forgive us our lack of trust. That prayer, help my unbelief, is one that it pleases him to answer. And he wants to hear that from you. He says, are you honest with yourself? But how? How can the Lord help your unbelief? The answer is pretty simple. It all lies in the words. He wants to talk to you. Jesus wants to talk to you at that moment. You heard the words from Isaiah. It is Jesus that's really speaking those words. He says, the Lord God gave me a tongue like the learned an instructed tongue, so I know how to sustain the weary with a word. He has words for you and me to carry us through those moments. The encouragement, the knowledge we need are found only in the words of Jesus. The word of God is the thing that's going to sustain our faith and keep it vital. Holy Scriptures, the very word of God gives us the main event of Jesus' rescue mission on earth. He came to save us from our sins, to give us the gift of eternal life. 
That's his words. His followers. Today, that's you and me. Takes his good news into the surrounding world. We are to not only hear his words, but to take them to others. The Holy Spirit breathes life into us through the story of Jesus. The word of God is the anecdote to fear and doubt and worry. How many times did any of those things hit you this last week alone? Fear, doubt, worry. His words are there for you. The word of God replaces those things with peace, trust, and faith. The word presents Jesus to us, inviting us to trust in him, not only for eternal life for our future, but also for the forgiveness of sins and, and for the helps in the battles today. Kind of appropriate find ourselves rallying in the Word of God. We need to make the Word of God a priority in our lives, my brothers and sisters. For here's another place where we could rightly pray, I believe, help my unbelief. You see, we might very well pray, Lord, I believe that's important to study your Word. And if I said that and I asked how many believe that you'd all raise your hands, I'm sure you would. And I hope you would. I pray you would. But the rest of it is help my unbelief that finds all kinds of ways to prevent that from happening. And that's the crux of it, my brothers and sisters. We have plenty of excuses, don't we, for not being in the Word. And I'm not going to go through them all and spend time because we know what they are. We know their excuses. We know they're not reasons. Will we really rally in the Word of God? Will we as individuals, as families, as disciples of Jesus make learning the Word, reading the Word, being in the Word our top priority? in the months and years ahead. There's an awful lot at stake, as our gospel lesson makes abundantly clear. Evil is real. The devil wants you and me to be of his possession. He wants our children too, and he wants our grandchildren. The stark reality is that you're either Satan's slave or God's dearly loved child. No neutral space. We're either filling ourselves and our children with poison or God's word. With garbage or God's grace and mercy. We can fill ourselves and our children with the junk that kills faith or, or give them holy things that cause faith to grow. Deeper roots, stronger shoots. Where do we find God's words? How do we find God's word? When do we find God's words? And again, that could be another message in itself. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I am going to give you some suggestions. Daily devotions. Portals of prayer. Do you pray with your spouse daily? You pray with your children daily. Do they uh, take the opportunity to pray with your grandchildren when they call on the phone? They may even ask you, what's a prayer, Grandma? Oh, wow. Wouldn't that be an enlightenment? Wonderful to hear words like that come from children. What's a prayer? We have the opportunity. You have your Bibles at home. You know where they are. Have they been used? Maybe you've got a Bible that you don't like the translation, you don't like the way it reads, but I can assure you that Pastor Mark or I, we can find a Bible for you that will make 
common sense to you, if you will, and be accurate to God's word. Just ask. May the Holy Spirit inspire each of us to listen, to read, to rally in the encouraging words of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you're not doing that at all, make it a fresh start. And if you're doing a little pushback a little bit and do a little bit more, you'll see what happens. You'll see and know what happens when you really listen to and act on the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. In your daily lives, you'll see that difference. In your spiritual struggles, you'll see that difference. And I pray we will do it to the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, your word is more than magic. Your word is truthful. You have promised to be with us. You have promised to help us through our struggles. And Satan keeps throwing struggles at us. Lord, you give us the answer, your word. Help us to find time to be in your word through Bible studies and devotions and Whatever, Lord, you put before us, maybe it would be a friend who would pray with us. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would bless us, encourage us, keep us strong in our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand if you're able. Let us now give confession of our Christian faith to one another as we use the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to us, both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worship and glory. This time we normally would be offering an offering plate, but here at Lamb of God, we do not pass that offering plate. If you're a visitor, we thank you for being here. We don't want you to be obligated to give an offering, but it is a way to give thanks to God for blessings received. Those who would like to give an offering may drop it in the offering box or in the narthex or in the offering envelope uh, box as well or online giving portal for our website. Our offering verse for this day comes from Isaiah chapter 50, verse 10. Who among you worships the Lord and listens to the voice of his servant? Anyone who walks in darkness and has no bright light, let him trust in the name of the Lord and let him lean on his God. We sing our
Please be seated for our prayers. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and not for all people according to their needs. Lord God, we believe. Help our unbelief. Sustain us through the many troubles and trials of this world. When unclean spirits afflict us and those that we love revive our trust in you. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have given your beloved Son the tongue of one who is taught that he may now know how to sustain with the word those who are weary. Prosper in every place the preaching of your gospel. By your Holy Spirit, enable your pastors to proclaim the word with clarity and joy. And by the same Spirit, open the ears of your children to believe it with gladness and action. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, guard the tongues and actions of our governing authorities, Joseph, our president, Gretchen, our governor, and all elect officials, that they may not stumble in what they say, but speak wisely and do what is in accord with your holy will. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you have promised that all things are possible for one who believes. In such faith, we bring before you all those on our prayer list, as well as those for whom special prayers have been requested. We asked, O oh Lord, that you would be Kathy Ross, Melissa's aunt who fell and broke her hip, and she is in recovery. We asked, O oh Lord, that you would be with Kathy and continue that recovery without complications. And may she give the praise and thanks to you. We pray for Karen Ash as she recuperates at Briarwood. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would continue to break her stronger, return her, Lord, to her home, and to her place of worship. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for Lowe's home quest, Karen's sister at Genesis, for test and a speedy recovery. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for Tony, who's having medical issues, a friend of Bonnie PT. We ask the Lord that you would be with that, her and watch over her and guide the medical physicians and people to to do the best they can. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Susan and J.R. Schisler and for Phyllis and Larry Schubring for improved health. Lord, watch over them, strengthen them both physically as well as spiritually. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Jane Wilson with lung and chest infection. We ask the Lord that you grant her strength Grant her free breathing as it be your will. Be with the doctors and medical staff that work with her, that it may be for her good. Lord, in your mercy. And we have just learned that Jackie Carter has passed away. Lord God, be with this family as they mourn the loss of a loved one. We thank you for the gift of Jackie. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you have given to us and to many others through her care and through her life. Now, Lord, you have taken her to be with you, to live forever in your kingdom. We thank you, O gracious Father, for this life. Lord, in your mercy. We ask that you, O Lord, would grant health and healing to all that we prayed for in accordance with your holy will. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we ask that you would watch over and bless all those who celebrate birthdays this week, including Susan Curtis, Emma Marcinkowski, Danelle Bradley, Jody Denon, and Paige Hope. As you have given them life now, keep them in steadfast faith until eternal life to come. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we ask that you would continue to bless the lives of all those who celebrate anniversaries this week, especially Nicholas and Katie Grimm. May they continue to grow in love for one another and the faith and love that you have given to them. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful 
the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Gracious, receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please stand if you're able. We'll continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take heed, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This blood is the New Testament, and this cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
And now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in this one true faith until life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Please stand if you're able. We give thanks to the Almighty God that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we ask you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in an fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now as we go out into the world in which we live and work and Yes, a world where we say we believe, and yet the next moment we say, well, help my unbelief. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you to be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace now and always. Amen. Amen. Sing our closing hymn. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. The love and the peace of Christ Jesus, your Savior, has been poured out upon you richly and abundantly. In the same manner as he has shared with you, pour out these gifts upon those around you who need to hear the gospel from your lips and by the work of your hands. In doing so, we serve in the world as his church. Go in peace, serve the Lord.